Hey everyone, so before we get into this next video about this junkyard dog Game Boy turned into a pretty pretty puppy now that we're done with it, I just wanted to give you guys a quick shout out and say thank you very very much for all the views and the responses on the previous video about uh, repairing a Pokemon Sapphire Game Boy Advance cartridge. It was really awesome to see all your guys' responses and all the likes and stuff were just really, really encouraging. So again, I wanted to say thank you very much. And of course, congratulations to Gabriel. Uh, I'm going to send this bad boy out to you today. And with that said, the issues we're going to fix in this video are probably two of the most common issues that you're going to see when you pick these up from garage sales or wherever you may find them. It's going to be corroded battery terminals that don't allow power to run to the system and vertical lines that are on the screen due to the ribbon connector breaking down both of which are not too difficult to fix, only require very, very basic tools, and we're also going to do a fun little battery LED mod, because that's a nice little beginner project that a lot of people can do with some very basic electronic parts. And as promised in the last video, we're going to do another giveaway, and this time it's going to be this DMG-01, as well as the copy of Fist of the North Star. So check out the video description for details on exactly how to join the contest, and enjoy the video. Oof. Oh boy. Yeah, this one's going to need a lot of work. Well, the screenplate is not a huge deal. Let's see what's going on in here. Oh, man. Just what I was afraid of. North Star here. Test with if it turns on. Yeah. No power light. And I'm adjusting the contrast knob just to be sure. No sound. If I check continuity between them with my meter. I'm probably going to run into an issue with one of them. So let's see. Yep. Mm. Yeah, this one looks really gunked too. Maybe if I scrape into it a little. Yeah, see if I really scrape in with the probe, I can get it to beep a little. But if I just push the pin, or the spring, rather. Yeah, nothing. We're going to take the Game Boy apart, and these contacts will all come out of here. And we're going to clean them up. And a really great thing that you probably already have around the house that's awesome for cleaning up corrosion is some plain old distilled white vinegar. Works great. You can just fill up a little dish, soak your parts in it, and give them a good scrub. That usually takes most of the corrosion off. So to start, to get at these battery connectors, we're going to need to disassemble the whole Game Boy body. To open this up, we're going to need our tri-wing screwdriver. And there are six uh, screws that need to come out, four that are on the outside of the Game Boy, and two that are down here, inside of the battery compartment. Now when you separate the case, you want to be careful because there is a ribbon cable connecting things. You're going to need to slowly and carefully unseat this connector by simply pulling it straight out. We'll probably have to deal with this a little bit later. Given the condition of this thing, I have a feeling we might have some things that we have to take a look at over here. For now, we'll just put this aside. So to get to where we need to go, we have to remove four Phillips head screws. There's two on the top board here, and then two on the headphone board. And with that, we're going to carefully lift the board out from this side, because the power inputs for this board are attached here and here. They're going to pop right out from the plastic, so we're just going to lift it up from right there carefully and take everything with us and that's that so now that we've gotten in here we can free up these battery tabs 
There are these little tabs. And that's what we're going to use to pop them out here, here, and here. And all you have to do is push the tab in, and then push down, and it'll fall right out. If these are really super shot, you can get replacements. But in this case, with a good vinegar soak, we can get these working no problem. Mmm, smells like science. Alright, so we're just going to toss these in for a quick soak. And you'll notice when you put them in that they fizz. Kind of like if you ever did the old baking soda and vinegar volcano. Without even scrubbing, just the chemical reaction has already done like a really really good job of cleaning these up. I mean they look almost brand new compared to what they were. So I'm gonna soak these for a couple of minutes and then we're gonna hit them with the toothbrush and a little bit of alcohol just to make sure we get any of that vinegar off of there. We don't really want it staying on there in the long run. And of course we don't want to forget about the main board. This is again the main power inputs. Everything else was just bridging between the batteries. Uh, so we definitely need to take care of these because there is a little bit of corrosion on them as well. I'm just gonna grab a Q-tip and dip it in a little bit of our vinegar here. Just go ahead and wipe down these connections with the vinegar Q-tip. Let's take these out of their soak. And we'll scrub some of that residue from the vinegar bath off with a toothbrush. And now that we have pretty much all the corrosion off of there, let's go ahead and scrub them clean with some alcohol just to get any of that vinegar that is remaining on there off. Nice! Those look almost brand new. So now that we've taken care of these pieces, it's definitely a good time to put everything back together and see if the Game Boy actually powers on and then we can get an idea of what we're dealing with with this thing. After your cleaning, you may need to bend these little inside tabs back just a little bit so that they actually snap. That should be plenty. Getting a little something. Well, I'll be damned.
dope music. And I'm just gonna give those contacts a little rub. Yeah, baby! Cool. So if you can see, uh, we do have some vertical lines here. But at this point, at least we have a working Game Boy that actually powers on, plays a game seemingly without any problem, and we have a good starting point to figure out what's going on with the screen here. So as you can see, I separated the top and bottom half of the Game Boy, and we're just going to work on the top half right now with the screen. And uh, I pulled the ribbon cable out for now and separated them just so we can get these Phillips head screws out of here and separate the motherboard and the speaker from the front case of the Game Boy. That's all the screws. Now we just need to lift both the speaker and the board out of the front of the case. Now, the board is glued down a little bit around the screen area, so if it's the first time it's coming out of the case, it's going to stick a little bit. But a little bit of negotiating and it should come right out. Just like that. And there we go. Now inside of here are the buttons and the rubberized pads. Sometimes these pads will stick to the board here on their contact points. Um, just peel them off and put them aside and keep them with the front half of your Game Boy. They're pretty good for holding in the buttons on the front. And do be mindful, they will fall out of there if you flop this thing around too much. So put this aside and just make sure you don't lose any of the buttons or these rubberized pads or you're going to be in big trouble later. I cleared some workspace so that we could work on this board a little bit. Um, the problem is basically this ribbon connection right here going to the bottom of the board. This is for all the vertical lines of resolution on the display, and as you can see that was the problem we were having. If you have horizontal lines, that's an entirely different thing. The connector is actually under the board, and honestly it's pretty hard to get to, so that one may be a screen replacement option. But for this, what we're going to basically do to prep this board is get rid of this rubberized strip here and we're going to clean it up and we're basically just going to introduce a soldering iron across the bottom of the strip and see if we can reflow some of the solder contacts from this ribbon down to the actual display. Um, that's what's causing those lines for us. The first thing we need to do is remove the strip here. And most of the time it just lifts right off. The adhesive that's here is pretty much worn down, but if you look closely, you can see that there is a piece of adhesive strip that's left behind all the way across. We want to get rid of that for sure before we're working on the board. And as the final part of our prep, I'm just going to use a little bit of alcohol on a Q-tip to just clean the residual adhesive off of this strip so that we have a nice clean surface to work with when we're using our soldering iron. And we do want to give this board a minute to dry before we power it back up so that we don't have any liquid in the connections. So I've brought the bottom half of the shell back into the equation because we're actually going to have to reconnect this and power the Game Boy up so that we can see what we're doing once we start reflowing these connections here. Otherwise, we're pretty much just going to be working blind and it's just going to be a crapshoot of whether or not we get these connections right. Now, to be honest, usually doing these ribbon connections, it takes a little bit of time. Um, it's not always as quick as just dropping the iron down and getting everything to be reflowed. Usually you have to work on it for a little while. So it's definitely a good idea to get this reconnected and then get everything set up in a comfortable position so that you can work. I'm going to show you how I do it. So we're going to start by just reconnecting this ribbon cable here.
Now again, we're going to be powering the Game Boy on, so the easiest way to work, as far as I'm concerned, is like this. Um, some people will do it like this, but I just don't really feel as comfortable with that kind of pressure on the top of the display and the back of the case. So I like to do it like this. With that said, we do have to be concerned about some short circuiting going on between the boards. So you need to put something in between to isolate them. Something like a little anti-static bag works pretty well. Just like that. You can also use a piece of cardboard uh, if you have something like that laying around or some rubber. Anything that just separates the two boards. If you don't have anything to separate the boards, your best bet is probably to just set it up in this configuration. But, like I said, I find it a little bit more comfortable to work this way. Okay, so I have everything reconnected again, and I've dimmed the lights down here a little bit so that you can see. We're actually going to work without a game in here, and I'm going to turn the contrast wheel all the way down, all the way up, so that we have a completely dark screen when we turn it on. And what you can see, of course, is those lines on the side. And usually, if we take something like a spudger and press down on those connections, yep, you can see how some of those lines are popping in and out. That's definitely indicative that there are problems with these connections here. I'm going to get my soldering iron turned on. And I'm going to heat it to uh, about 650. So for this, I'm going to use a little bit of a broader tip than I usually work with. It's going to help with that flat flex cable. But I'm going to go ahead and wipe off uh, any of the excess solder on there because we really want the iron pretty clean for this. So now with the screen on, what I'm going to do is take my iron and I'm basically going to start attempting to reflow the edge of the connector here because that's where these lines are appearing. And you pretty much just want to hit it a little bit. And release. Make sure you keep it moving the whole time. so you don't melt that cable. And again, this usually takes a little bit of time to get done, so be patient. And you want to get nice and close down to the where the screen meets. And you can see we took care of most of those lines. This one's really cooperating. Give those solder connections a little bit of time to dry. And while that's happening, I'm going to move over here to the other side of the board. And we're going to try that side too. And don't be scared if you start losing some of the other lines while you're doing this, that's totally normal. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry a little. I'm just gonna lightly push on these connections and see if I get any of the problems with the pit with the lines just to make sure there's nothing else there we're gonna wait to do the other side just so it dries a little bit more but it looks like we got it and you may notice that when I was working over here the bottom part of the screen started to get a little dark now, if that happens, you do want to try to move the iron away because you are starting to uh, potentially burn the screen, but as you can see, as soon as the heat went away, the screen pretty much went back to normal. So as long as you don't do it for an extended period of time, you should be fine.
with my spudger, just lightly go over these connections on the end of the ribbon and just push on them. Just make sure that I'm not seeing any lines reappearing. And this is just to make sure that we really got those connections. I'm going to throw the contrast back to somewhere in the middle. I'm going to pop a game back in and let's see what happens. We should have all the lines now. Yep. That's the whole display. Excellent. So sometimes you have to be persistent with this because it takes a little bit of time. Um, but sometimes it's not as difficult. This was a pretty good one. And as you can see, there's really only very minimal damage to the flex cable. These can take a decent amount of heat, and I will bet you that a lot of this is actually just a little bit of residual solder that was on my iron. But basically, this is all you should really see. Um, again, I have my iron set at 650 degrees Fahrenheit, so pretty hot, and I didn't really have a problem. And I was using a, a pretty broad tip, too. So, there we go. Now we can move on to the next thing. Pretty much at this point, we could close this thing up. We have it all working. Some people will go and replace all the electrolytic caps, but I won't necessarily do that myself unless there's some kind of a problem that requires it. Usually for Game Boys, I just leave the caps the way that they are. With that said, I figured we would do something that was a little bit fun with this. Personally, I think the red LED is kind of boring. I prefer a different color, like blue. Blue makes me feel nice. We're going to have to desolder this LED, and we're also going to have to desolder this 1K resistor that's here. That's part of that LED circuit. And we do want to replace this with something that's got a little bit more resistance, or else we're going to end up with a really super bright LED. Now, you may like that, but I personally think it's a little bit obtrusive. What I'm going to use for this is a 3.3K resistor. You can use a 3K if you have that, but I just had a 3.3K laying around. And you're also going to need a 3mm LED. Now, this is a blue LED. It's a 3mm 20mAh LED. This one has a forward voltage of 3.2 to 3.4 volts. This would be a good match for what's in there. It'll fit because it's the same size. And with that resistor that we're going to put in, the brightness should be pretty good. So I'm going to start by removing the LED here. And I just have to be careful of the contrast knob here. It's plastic and it's pretty close to this part, but it should be okay as long as I'm careful. I'm going to introduce a little bit of flux onto the board. And I'm going to grab the LED with some tweezers so that I can hopefully yank it out once I melt the solder. There is our LED. And I'm going to go ahead and use some of my trusty solder wick to wick up some of that solder. Let's try to get the one that's closer to the wheel first. And be mindful, that wick is going to get hot, so just be careful that you don't bite the wheel with it. Just going to get the last little bit that I can off the board. Cool. As you can see, we have two nice clear vias and two pads that have most of the old solder taken off of it. Let's go ahead and move on to the resistor. So the pads that we need to grab for the resistor are here and here. This one is for a diode, so we want to leave that alone. Now because I can see that the legs are bent a little bit, I'm going to use a little bit of solder braid to remove some of the solder first.
So now it should be pretty easy to just lift these legs up and pop that out of there. There we go. So polarity on a resistor does not matter, so I'm going to trim it a little bit so it's a little bit workable, more workable for me. It really doesn't matter which direction it goes in. I'll go ahead and bend the legs. And I'm going to bend these legs out just a little bit to hold the resistor in place for me. Fresh solder on the iron. Go ahead and wipe the tip and introduce a little bit more. And I'm going to drop some flux on the legs of the resistor and on the pads. And again, can't stress enough, if you want to get good solder joints, it's important that you heat both the part and the pad with the iron. So you can see there's the little circle pad and there's the leg of the part. We want to get the iron in there so that we're touching both with a nice solid connection and introduce some solder. A little more. Go ahead and put a dot of flux on there. And just hop in there with the iron one more time and just really make sure that I got a good wetted joint. Let's get this other pad, a little bit of flux, a little fresh solder, So LEDs, if you don't know, are polarized, meaning that they have to go into the circuit in the correct direction or they will not work correctly. So if you look on the board here, there's a little symbol that says LED right below it. And this little triangle guy with the line, this is indicating of an LED on a schematic or on a circuit diagram. And this side with the line, this indicates where the negative pole is. Now, you can always check if you don't remember, and to be quite honest with you, I frequently forget, so I usually just check. You're just going to use your multimeter, and just check which one goes to ground. Now, on this one, these little pins here, I happen to know go to ground, so I'm going to go ahead and just touch this to here. And as you can see, we're getting a nice beep to ground. When you buy LEDs, there's always going to be one leg that's longer and one leg that's shorter. One leg that is shorter. The long leg is for the positive side of the circuit and the short leg is for the negative. So I highly recommend you don't trim your LEDs until you've dropped it into your circuit so that you don't get confused about which one is your positive and which one is your negative. If for some reason you do have to cut it, just make sure you always trim your negative lead a little bit shorter than your positive one. I'm going to go ahead and flip the board over. And again, we have that LED symbol here on the circuit letting us know that the via on the left hand side for us is the negative. So I'm going to make sure that I put the shorter leg into that hole. And you do want to take the time with this to just make sure that you get the LED nice and flush to the board and that it's seated properly because if it's off kilter, uh, it may not fit back into the case. But this one looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and move to the other side of the board and start the soldering process.
That should work perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and trim those up. And just be mindful of your board clearance below the contrast knob. Make sure that your solder fillet doesn't get in the way. Everything looks good. Now we're just going to clean up all that flux with some alcohol and we can reassemble this bad boy and see what we got. So now before we move on to reassembly, I definitely want to clean this case up. It is crusty. The best thing for most of these I find is to just use some warm water and soap for the rubber pads here. And everything else is pretty much going to be a combination of the same. Warm water and soap really does a good job on getting the majority of the gunk and stuff off of these things. And anything that's stubborn can be followed up with a little bit of alcohol. I have a feeling this is some glue from some tape or something. So this is most likely going to require a little alcohol. I pretty much start with warm water and soap and go from there. If I need to get tougher than that, I do. But anything I can do with just warm water and some dish soap is a plus. All right, so now that we have it cleaned up, I mean, just look at it. Isn't it just leaps and bounds from where it was? Everything is completely different. And now that everything is working, we're going to have a Game Boy that's looking so much better than it originally was. But with that said, I have one last thing I have to take care of, and that is this screen protector here. This was detached when I got it, so there's a couple different ways to handle this, but honestly, the easiest way to take care of it is with a little crazy glue. The main thing here is that you just want to be careful that you don't put too much of it, because you really don't want it to seep onto the, the non-opaque part of the screen, because it will definitely mess up the lens and there's no way of really getting it off of there um, and also you want to just try to not get it around the actual you know main bezel of the screen from the Game Boy housing itself but if you're conservative and you drop just a couple of small dots in the right places it'll bond it pretty much permanently and that is kind of the downside of using crazy glue is that it's really like pretty much a permanent bond in this case I'm gonna assume that this one's gonna stay as is so I'm just gonna glue it down so now that I've had sufficient fun getting my crazy glue unclogged, as per usual, we can go ahead and drop down a couple of dots of glue. I like to put it here on the front plate of the Game Boy, and then come in with the screen and drop it in place. Now, I've already cleaned the screen as well as it can possibly clean, so I'm going to have the screen to the side ready to go for me to grab. I'm going to favor these thicker parts of the bezel here. These thin parts, I mean, they really don't need that much in order to stay down. This glue will hold, so I'm going to pretty much put a dot eh, about here, roughly in the middle, and somewhere down here. Avoiding, again, just getting too close to the, comp to the side bezel of where the screen's going to lay, so that it doesn't bubble up over the sides of the screen. Uh, I'm also going to avoid this little hole for the LED as well. So, let's go. I would say right square in the middle. Roughly there would be good. I'm going to drop one here. Drop one above. And you really want to make sure you use small drops of this stuff. Just gonna scrape a little bit there. Barely a drop. Put this aside. I'm gonna go ahead and use just the stick part of a Q tip to get rid of a little bit of some of this glue because I think I put a little bit too much here, a little bit too much here. You can kind of spread it out a little bit like this too. I think that should be good. Here we go. Now we're going to just go ahead and push the screen in place. And again, this is where you want to be really careful because if you do have any leak and come up around the side of the bezel, 
You just want to make sure you don't touch it with your fingertips because you can then spread it to the front of the glass. It's better for it to just have a little bit of extra in the side bezel than for it to actually intrude on the glass. So I'm just going to set this aside, let the screen dry a little bit, and in the meantime, I'm going to start reassembling the Game Boy. Now that we're ready to reassemble the front, we can't forget about that rubber strip that we had from before. This acts as a spacer, so it actually puts a little bit of pressure down on this strip. And while we don't want there to be too much pressure on there, we do want to at least replace the rubber strip that was originally in there. Now, the adhesive is probably worn off, and what I like to do is just basically come in with a little piece of Kapton tape that I've trimmed down, and I'm just going to pretty much pop it right over the top of the rubber like so, making sure it's not touching the actual screen. Okay, that should be perfect and hold it in place and I'm just going to use some scissors to just trim the edge of the tape there. And now that we have that in place we can put this back into the front assembly of the Game Boy and we can get everything put back together. So I have to say, I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. This thing really looked like it was ready to go into the dumpster when we started with it. And now it looks great. The screen works, everything looks good, and you can take this around and proudly use it without anybody giving you any weird looks about whatever that orange crust was that was over here. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully you learned some stuff, and thanks again so much for watching. Take care.